Hi guys, welcome back. So I am going to use the Tim Holtz Fireside um, dies, some honeybee stamps, a little spooky dies, which are new to me, and some water soluble oil pastels. I've had these for years and I just wanted to do something different. So we're, we're coloring our die cut images with watercolor pastels or oil soluble, no, water soluble <laughs> pastels. So I started out with a, um, like an aqua marker, I think that's what they're called. Um, but I switched out to a paintbrush and water, it just worked much better. Now what I was finding is that the, although it's fun to paint images and things with your, um, with your pastels, it, it wasn't, like they, I couldn't see the detail on the dies and the, these dies from Honeybee Stamps and the Tim Holtz ones do have a lot of detail on them. And so um, I, I sort of, you'll see on this, um, I don't know what you call this, the, uh, the smoke or the, I don't know, what's that called? That comes out of a cauldron. It wasn't doing very well. All the oozy stuff that comes out of a cauldron um so it wasn't showing up so well so i then took the uh pastel direct to the die cut piece um and that was much much better um i know with the green you can't totally see it here but you'll see it so much better now when i go back to the skull so i had already pre sort of watercolored if you like <clears throat> the um all the pieces but going back over them, doing this was much, much better. And you can see, you can suddenly see the skull space, which makes me very happy. <laughs> so, so I will continue to do this throughout for all of them and just adding the same sort of colors, sometimes adding another color in um, of the ones that I'd watercolored them with. Um, you'll see on the, on the uh, what's this thing called? Candelabra, that really sort of comes to life as well. Um, especially all the detail on the base of it, it just it just lifts it. So the sort of waxiness, I guess, of the the crayons then suddenly pick up all that detail, that raised detail from the dyes that the dyes create. So cool! <laughs> I just love it. Cauldron looks great. You can see some of the sort of again more detail on the on each of them. And sometimes I go in with my finger, and you'll see that in a second with the books. The pile of books is probably my favorite bit, which I'll explain when we get there. But again, for the candles, I just went over with a pale brown to give them that sort of brownie, sort of, not brownie, waxy <laughs> kind of color, uh, just so they'd show up a bit. And again, this detail on every single piece, it's just incredible. So for the, um, the books, again, I went back over with the same colors that I'd watercolored them with. I rubbed the crayon on top and then used my finger to sort of burnish it, if you will. And you'll see in a second, this makes a huge difference at bringing that detail out. It suddenly popped off the edge of the book and every book has a different detail, unless it's the really skinny ones that are just a, a plain book, if you like, uh, or spine of the book. But I still went over them, but you'll see the, the the detail that gets embossed into those pieces suddenly comes to life. I just think it's the coolest thing. So I was really chuffed. You guys probably already knew that you could do this. <laughs> this was trial and error because I didn't like how things were going. I was trying to show you guys how to color in um, your die cuts with some, you know, with some pastels. And uh, yeah, to start with, it didn't go <laughs> as well as I planned. So for the fire, this is how I was doing all the other pieces. I'd start off with watercoloring them just to get their color on there. Um, so the fire I did just so I still had that base color. For the grate, I just went direct with some black and then I went in with some gray. And then I will show you, I'll just use my fingers to sort of, I suppose, rub that down a bit. And it just, I don't know, it just makes it work. So there's the grate. And then for the um, the fire, I just went with three shades of like a, an orange. This fireplace and the grate is from the Fireside, which is the Tim Holtz die set. Um, so I went with three different sort of yellowy orangey colors. And again, just picked it up with my fingers and rubbed it together. 
So once that was done, I used the um, ghoulish grunge and the spooky skeletons. Spooky skeletons from Newton's Nook is what I used for my sentiment. I suddenly realised I didn't have a sentiment for this card. <laughs> And the ghoulish grunge I used in the background of the fireplace. You can see some dripping blood and a bit of a brick wall. That's what I used them for, just on a scrap piece of cardstock that I stuck to the back of the fireplace. Um, there is like an insert bit that cuts out when you cut the fireplace out, but I uh, don't know what I did with it. So, <laughs> so I just created a panel um, and it creates a little bit of a recess for the rest of it to go in. So it worked out quite nicely. So my card base is going to be five by seven. So this black piece of cardstock is like an eighth smaller. That's it. I, I couldn't tell you the math, but it's an eighth smaller than the five by seven. <laughs> so whatever that works out at. Um, I just use my paper drawer to kind of guide me. And then what I'm doing is every uh, half inch on the sort of short side, on the sort of slightly less than five inch side, um, and I realized there's going to be a shorter panel on that side. I didn't overthink that. But I just went down and scored half an inch throughout the whole thing. And then I'm going to turn it on its side. So it's on the sort of almost seven inch side and go every inch. I just wanted something in the background to look kind of like wood paneling or paneling on the, the quote unquote wall that's going to be in the back of the scene. Um, and again, I realized this one edge will be slightly narrower. I'm not thinking or overthinking that. And I like the side that had the debossed, so where we, the side that we scored on um, rather than the other side, but you could use either end. Then I decided that it needed something else. Um, so I took some antique linen distress oxide ink and because it's oxide, it will sit on top of a darker color cardstock. So I took that and just went around the edges and I think this gives it kind of a ghostly kind of look um it just worked <laughs> i thought so i had that uh, ready for my back piece then for the floor um i just cut a strip i couldn't tell you how big this is sorry i just kind of guesstimated because of the pieces that i have for my scene and i used some distress ink in brushed corduroy so just the normal distress ink and I will spritz this with water as well, or flick water onto it. I'm having some spritz, spritzer issues at the moment. So I just took the little nozzle out of the water bottle that I have. I have like three different types of water bottle. And I just used that to flick it onto the little panel. It's really easy. You can do it with a paintbrush, whatever. Um, but spraying for some reason? Yeah, having issues with that at the moment. So got that um, on there and then... Uh, dabbed up the extra, extra water. I also realized I hadn't uh, stamped my sentiment, which I then put in the center of the fireplace, which you'll see in a second when we put that back in, um, into the scene. And now I'm just gonna start to put the whole scene together. So I've got, I have sped this up a bit as well, just to save some time. So I've got a tiny little white border. That's why I say it's just a, like an eighth of an inch smaller uh, for my back panel. And I've stuck that straight onto the front of the card. I'm then going to put my flooring in straight onto the bottom of that. Just make sure you use enough adhesive when you've got embossed or inky or, you know, you've messed around with water, that kind of thing. Just make sure there's enough adhesive. Wet adhe adhesive would work really well as well. So you'll see me make a pretty big boo-boo here in a minute, <laughs> but we'll fix it. Um, I didn't realize, well, I did realize because that's why the card's so big. But when I was putting the pieces together to put my scene together, I completely forgot how tall the candelabra actually is. So I was thinking I need to put my fireplace in a specific spot, which you'll see. Uh, and uh, yeah, you'll see I'll have to move the whole thing down. <laughs> so there's like glue ooze everywhere. So to me, this kind of looked like from the flooring point of view, this looked like it made sense for the fireplace to go there. If I hadn't put an acrylic block on there, it might have been a little bit better, but I was quick enough before that glue actually dried to be able to move these pieces down. So just, if that worries you, rather try and lay them out before you put adhesive on it and you'll be much better. <laughs> so, so I moved the fireplace because it hadn't stuck and then I just kept sliding my <laughs> candelabra down to where I wanted it so it would fit on the card and then 
lined up my the top of my top edge of my fireplace with where I wanted the candelabra to sort of sit so it looked like it was on top of the fireplace. So so yeah, learn from my mistakes. Um a lot of the adhesive that you see you might be able to see on camera there. Um it, it gets covered either by the books or it gets um it's it dries clear anyway. Um and uh yeah, you you can't even notice it really. <laughs> So what I did with the um, cauldron is I popped it up on some little foam squares and popped that to the left and then I did the same with the skull and he's got his own candle that's dripping down him. I think he's the coolest thing. And uh, that pretty much is the card. In fact, that is the card. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. I hope this gave you some inspiration for using the honeybee dyes and mixing and matching with things like your Tim Holtz dyes. And um, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will see you next time guys. Bye for now.